Okay, welcome. Um, yeah, welcome to my talk. Um, so this is the constraint layer, you know? And I actually got asked several times in the last few days how I could propose to talk about constraint layout before I.O. So, yeah, I have to tell you, it's awesome, but well, I'm not talking about it. I'm talking about, so I want to ask you actually a question. Who is coordinating already? So, yeah, raise your hands, please. Okay, that's a few. Um, out of these, who wrote his own behavior already? That's a few less. Okay. And who dig that deep so he knows how the app layout works, actually? Oh, okay. You're on the right track. Um, yeah. But first, let's have a look back at the material core principles. So the first principle is, of course, the material metaphor. So the digital UIs you're building should behave like material, so the user has kind of a feeling how it will behave. And the second one is that everything should be bold, graphic, and with being bold, important actions can really jump out. So the user, so it, you can be sure the user will see this. But when you do these two things, the apps will look really great, but on screenshots but users actually tend to interact with your apps. And because of that, there's a third principle, which is meaningful motion. Um, and this is actually what makes material design really material design, because this makes the material behave like material. And it says that every animation really should have a reason. So animations shouldn't be there for eye candy, but should be useful. And there are actually a few good examples what material motion can do and how it can be useful. So, for example, motion animations can foreshadow actions, or it can distract from loading data. For example, a really good example here are window transitions when you press an item inside a list and it animates to the detail screen, you won't see that the detail screen is actually loading data first. Another good reason is that it communicates hierarchy for your material elements. And one last big reason is that it guides focus. So when a new element becomes visible and it's really important, animate it in so the user will really see that it enters your screen and that it's there. And to build all this, you need some components, right? Otherwise, it will, yeah, will be lots of work. And one really good component that helps you here is the coordinator layout. You could think of coordinator layout to fulfill two roles. It can be a decorator, so it can impose additional features on its child views, and it can be an orchestrator, so it can orchestrate its child views so that one view can react to changes on another view. You can also maybe think of it as an event bus for view-related events. Or, as the documentation says, it's a super-powered frame layout. And this is actually interesting. So the coordinator layout, when you don't use any of its superpowers, it will exactly behave like a frame layout but it actually doesn't extend frame layout, which could be important to know. Um, but yeah, let's have a look at its superpowers. Um, one superpower is view anchoring. So here's a little example. The floating action button here is anchored to a bottom sheet. And it's kind of, so the anchoring is kind of a simple behavioral connection for your views. This can be set via XML or even in your code. And it looks like, so you have to um, provide the anchor view where your view, in this case, the floating action button should be anchored to. In this case, the bottom sheet. I just called a bottom sheet here. There's no bottom sheet widget, actually. Um, 
Yeah, and the second parameter you need to provide is a gravity so it knows how it should be anchored to, the, to your anchor view. Um, interesting here is that you can also nest it. So your anchor view doesn't really need to be an actual child of your coordinator layer, but can be a child of a child from coordinator layer. Um, yeah, this is one superpower of coordinator layout, but let's have a look at a more powerful superpower. That is actually the behavior. Um, a behavior is a plugin for view, child views of the coordinator layout, and a behavior can intercept certain events that are happening to the child views. For example, it can intercept the views measurement or the views layouting or touch events on the child views, or it can react to size and position changes of another view in the coordinator layout. It can also react to window insets, so you can, using a behavior, you can get to know how much space the status bar or the navigation bar inside your whole screen uses. So maybe you need to apply your views for that, adjust for use, your views for that. And the biggest thing where it can react to, the most complex thing I'd say, is nested scrolling. But yeah, okay, now we know what a behavior is, how do we apply it to child views? So there are actually three ways to do it. First, simply at, at, uh, in the layout, there's a, um, layout parameter provided by the coordinator layout, and there you just have to mention the class of your behavior, and it will instantiate it then and apply it to the view. And then you can also do it via annotation on the view itself when you always want to have one, when you have a custom view and you want this custom view to have always a specific behavior, you can do it like this or you can set it by a code on the layout parameters. So the behavior instance is always kept in the child views layout parameters. And with that, each child view can just have one behavior applied to it. Um, with this, uh, it's also interesting which constructors you have to implement when you are implementing your behavior. Of course, when you are doing it via layout XML, you have to use a constructor um, that also ap applies some layout parameters. And you can also use specific parameters for the behavior here, um, which you gen can just resolve inside your code like any normal layout parameters. Um, when you set your behavior via code or via annotation, the empty constructor will be called. Okay, um, yeah, on the parameters, could, it is a best practice to use the behavior naming instead of the layout naming. So you don't get confused later on. Um, but yeah, let's have a look at uh, one more thing. Behaviors can also be, so they are actually typed to views. So you can either type it to a specific view that will make sure that this behavior can just be used on this special view, or you do it in a more generic way so your behavior can be used for any child view of the coordinator layer. Okay, but let's have some examples of how to implement a layout, uh, a behavior. Um, now we want to have a look at the floating action button behavior that is actually directly from the design library support design library, and what it does is it listens for changes on neighbor views. Um, you see it here, so when there comes a snack bar in, it reacts to it, and the floating action button will get translated further up, so the snack bar won't cover it. How does it look in code? So the behavior is typed for floating action button, so it can just be used there. And what it, what it does is it overrides layout depends on, and this gets called by the coordinator layout for every view that is a child of the coordinator layout. 
and it will, yeah, it will, as a dependency, it will supply every other view that lives inside the coordinator layout, and we have then to tell coordinator layout, yes, I'm interested in changes to one specific type of view, and this is the snack bar layout. That's the one used internally by the snack bar to be shown. Um, yeah. When we have that defined, coordinator layout knows when something is happening to the snack bar layout, then I have to call this, on dependent view changed. And on dependent view changed, um, yeah, it will be called on changes of the snack bar layout. And what, we're, what it does here then is, sorry, what it does here then is um, when it sees there is a change to a snack bar layout, it will take a look at this change, what it is, and translate the um, floating action button accordingly. What's also happening here, what's maybe a bit confusing, is that this also implements listening for changes to, the, to an add bar layout. And this is actually related to the anchoring. So although here we are just registering this behavior for changes on a snack bar layout, although we're doing this, it also calls on dependent view changes for changes on an app bar layout because coordinator layout knows the floating action button is anchored to an app bar layout. So in this case, when it's also anchored, it will also call this on dependent view change. And um, in this case, it implements that when you have the header inside your layout, which is an app bar layout, and the floating action button is anchored to that, and the app bar layout gets animated out of your screen, then you want the floating action button to also disappear. That's what it does. Um, yeah. The next bigger example is the app bar layout itself. And this one is quite complex, I'd say. It uses nested scrolling. And so what it is for, it implements app bar related animations. And yeah, app bar layout will just work inside coordinator layout. And yeah, here you see an example of what it can do when you scroll the recycler view in this case, it will animate out the app bar layout. Um, how does it look in the layout, in your XML? So the app bar layout needs to wrap the toolbar. And yeah, let's have a look like that. The app bar layout needs to wrap the toolbar. And on the toolbar, you need some scroll flags to tell the coordinator layout how it should animate this app bar layout or this toolbar out. And so what you see here is also layout behavior, app bar scrolling view behavior, and that needs to be applied on the recycler view so it can interact with the scrolling element of your view hierarchy. Um, with the scroll flags, you can configure your app bar layout how exactly it should animate its content. And here you are, here we have, this is actually the same I showed before. This is um, enter always, the enter always scroll flag. It makes sure that any downward scroll, when the app bar layout is out, any downward scroll will make it visible again. You could think of it as a, as a quick return pattern. Another, another scroll flag here is enter always collapsed. So it only re-expands when a scrolling view has reached its top. And actually, to be honest, I never remember these scroll flags. I always have to look them up myself. And the third one is exit until collapsed. So it scrolls off until a min height is reached, the min height of the toolbar. And like that, you can have a bigger header, but keep the toolbar still in view. Okay, how does all this work internally? Um, as said, it uses nested scrolling. And yeah, the recycler view in this case implements 
nested scrolling child that is an interface that lives in, I think, the v4 support library. And coordinator layout implements nested scrolling parent. And what these interfaces do is, as soon as a scrolling gesture happens on a recycler view, um, the nested scrolling child will call its nested scrolling parent to tell it, huh, here's a scrolling happening, but I'm not yet doing something with the scrolling distance. And then the nested scrolling parent, in this case the coordinator layout, will tell the appa layout behavior that some scrolling happened, and the appa layout behavior will see, oh, my appa layout is still in view, so, and I'm getting some scroll events, so I will, this, I will use this scrolling distance to animate the appa layout out. So the behavior will then tell the coordinator layout or the nesting scrolling parent how much distance of this scrolling it used, and this will get supplied to the child again, and the distance that didn't get used, for example, when the behavior is completely scrolled out, the nesting scrolling child can then use the scrolling distance to actually apply its own scrolling. What's also interesting here, and this is why you need to apply behavior to your scrolling view, that is the scrolling view behavior, that is just a behavior that listens to changes, to position changes on the app layout. So it sees the app layout gets animated out, and that means the recycler view should also change its position so it replaces the app layout. So the app layout, um, yeah, in this case the app layout here is actually getting translated up just like the, uh, sorry, the recycler view is getting translated up and then later on when it sees the scrolling distances are complete, uh, so the app layout is not interested in the scrolling distance anymore, I can consume it myself and then it starts scrolling. Yeah, okay, this is nested scrolling and the upper layout, but there are some more interesting callbacks on behaviors you can implement. Like on measure child, um, this will be called not for neighbor views, not for other child views, but for the child view that um, has this behavior applied to and it will get called every time the coordinator layout wants to measure this child. So it will call this first, then the behavior can decide, do I want to use, do I want to apply some other measurement to my view? For example, you could implement a max width behavior with this. And then, yeah, then the coordinator layout knows, did we, did the behavior measured my child already, or do I have to do it, like a frame layout would. Also, you can implement uh, on layout child, where you can kind of override the layouting of the child view, and you can implement on apply window inserts, as said, to use the sizes of the status bar or the navigation bar, for example. Um, other useful behaviors that are inside the design library uh, uh, is, for example, the bottom sheet behavior. This is a behavior that intercepts touch events and nested scrolling and makes every view where it is applied to behave like a bottom sheet inside the coordinator layout. And this one is also actually quite complex. Um, another behavior inside the design lib is the swipe dismiss behavior that implements the swipe to dismiss pattern, and, and this one is actually used by the snack bar layout. So maybe you, we saw it before, when the snack bar layout um, is visible, you can touch it and swipe it out of your view. This is implemented by this behavior. And this one intercepts touch events. Um, yeah, that's it basically for behaviors, but now let's have a little roundup. So, Coordinator layout is really very important um, component of the design library. So basically every component, every widget in the design li library has 
some, something to do with the coordinator layer. Is it implementing a behavior or is it a component that actually just works inside coordinator layer? Um, yeah, generally this is, I think, really, really powerful framework for animations and it exists now since I.O. last year and I'm actually a bit disappointed that there's not so much going on about this inside the Android community. Well, that's why I'm doing this talk, but I would really love to see behaviors popping up. Um, yeah, behaviors are really powerful because they are completely disconnected from other code of your app. For example, it, when you want to have complex animations, you can use the behaviors without cluttering up your code inside inside your views, inside your activities or fragments, as said. And yeah, it, when you implement them properly, you can easily configure them by just XML. Um, yeah, when you want to implement your behaviors, really dive deep into the design library, as said. Behaviors are everywhere there, and there's some really cool stuff going on. And yeah, what I went into at Jimdo when we wanted to use behaviors and screen transitions or window transitions is that when you're animating a component in with a window transition and you have a behavior applied to it, the changes out of the view transition can make the behavior react to it. And with that, you can get into some really weird conditions. So. Have a look for that. And actually, I want to, um, yeah, I would, I would say if you want to learn about screen transitions, have a look at the next talk by Ben Weiss. That is a look into window transitions. And it's some really cool talk with some really useful tips. Yeah, OK, that's it already for me. So thank you. And I'm open for questions. Who may I walk up to? Yeah. Somebody else? Somebody else? Okay. First for the first. Um, thank you for the talk. It was really interesting. Uh, we already use in coordinator layout in our project. Um, and I have this feeling that we are going to use like one coordinator layout inside the other one. Because um, I don't know, I'm not sure, maybe I missed it, but there is like this specific behavior for snack bar, uh, that the snack bar will be uh, connected to the window or a coordinator layout if, it's, uh, if it finds it on the way to the window. Uh, and we basically need this like snack bar to be inside one fragment. And when we are switching the tab, we don't want to like snack bar to be like present on the second tab. Uh, and on top we have this like up bar, which is scrollable and dismissible. So basically like in my head there is a solution like one coordinator layout for the fragment and another one for the like main view. Did you try it? <laughs> no. <laughs> but, well, do, do you have a specific question there? Um, I, I was curious if you tried it and if you like faced uh, some issues with that or like the behavior was really weird or complicated or like. Well, um, no, I haven't tried it, but I would suggest you, Chris Payne's is walking around here, right? Um, and I guess he worked a lot on coordinator layout. So maybe I guess he tried it at some point and has some suggestions there? Like, I haven't tried it yet, but like, I was listening to the talk and I was like thinking about like this problem that I have and like, we don't, we haven't solved it yet, but we are about to solve it like in the nearest future, so. Yeah, I said, no experience with using coordinator layout in coordinator layout. Okay, thank you. Sorry. Who else? Uh, 
Hi, I have a question about uh, collapsing the app bar uh, and nested scrolling. Uh, in the example you showed, you had the coordinate layout and the recycle view, which was the, a direct child of the coordinate layout. Uh, suppose I have a use case where I have a view pager and I have a recycler view in each of the fragments and I want to collapse or uncollapse the app bar whenever any of these childs scroll. Uh, is it possible to do with a single coordinate layout? Do you have any thoughts, tips on that? Yes. So, um, yes, it is possible. Um, we're using coordinate layout with a view pager inside and the pages of the view pages have scrolling views and when you apply the scrolling view behavior to each of these scrolling views, it should work out. Because the scrolling view behavior doesn't necessarily need to be set on a direct child of the coordinate layout, but can be set on childs of childs of the coordinate layout. Where you have to be, yeah, what you have to take care of here is that you don't break the chain of nested scrolling. So the scrolling view that has the scrolling view behavior needs to be a nested scrolling child, and when it sits in a nested scrolling parent that is also a nested scrolling child, this parent will make sure to deliver this nested scrolling events to the coordinator layout. So, yeah, it is possible, but don't break the nested scrolling chain. What do you do if you need to have uh, multiple behaviors, say nested scrolling view and uh, bottom sheet behavior? Yeah. Um, either extend the behaviors or copy code from another behavior to another behavior. So, as I said, there can be just one behavior per child. Yeah. Or well, what you also could do, I didn't do it yet, but what I could think of is wrap one behavior inside another behavior. So one behavior has the instance of another behavior, and when it gets the calls to its own callbacks, it could call the internal behavior too. Just an idea. Hi. So um, there, the, there's one example. This is also really typical, where you have a coordinator layout that. Okay. So there is a coordinator layout when you on the app. Uh, how is it called? The toolbar. So when you scroll down, it expands. You can get a picture in the background with a parallax effect. And also the the title gets bigger as you scroll down. Mm -hmm. So um, what I want to achieve is to have the title uh, multi-line when it's expanded. Do you think that this can be achieved uh, with a custom behavior, or should I take another approach? So yeah, I think you could do it with a behavior too. Um, so how? This actually works is with the collapsing toolbar layout. I didn't cover that here. I had a slide for that, but I removed it again because I thought it would get too long then. Um, yeah, so this is covered by the collapsing toolbar layout, and it has, in, how is it called, a text animation helper, something like that. So it draws the text on its own to change its sizing and so on. So it doesn't animate the text view there. Um, what you can do, of course, is possibly, so I didn't actually try several lines there inside the title, um, but what I could imagine is having a text view on top that has its Hi. own behavior, and with that you animate this text view. Just a, possibly. Just a quick note, um, we needed something like this in our app, a multi-line collapsing yeah. toolbar and we built recently encapsulated into a separate library. If you just search for multi-line collapsing toolbar on GitHub, you will find it. Yeah, yeah know that now. It's good. <laughs> Anybody else with a question? Yeah. Hello. Um, the question um, 
does it make sense to use coordinator layout um, for infinite scrolling in lists or paging? Or uh, is it not the, um, the use case? So yeah, I think you could, you could do something like that and every item inside your scrolling element could have a behavior. But um, for that, because then you really would need to implement your own view recycling, right? When you are using behaviors to scroll the stuff. And I guess when you have so many items and you want to apply behaviors to all of the items and you need to implement your own view recycling, I know. I, I would. No, I, I just meant uh, whether you can trigger maybe the request for the next page with the help of the coordinator layout to find out that you are at the end of the list and want to load more, yeah, the next page of items. Maybe that's possible when nested scrolling. Could imagine that, but I think it would be easier to hook up into recycler view or its adapter then. Okay. Thank you. Was that it? Do we have any more questions? No, we don't. Matthias, thank you very much again for this inspiring talk.